is 9 a.m. and I would like to welcome everyone uh, to our meeting this morning, all members of council and our staff. And we look forward to our staff giving us information so that we can make the best decisions in the interest of all of our residents of ACW. I would like to indicate that this meeting is being held electronically by bylaw number 52-2020 section 310, which allows for electronic participation of council meetings. With that, I would ask if any council members have any disclosure of pecuniary interest of potential conflict of an agenda item this morning that they would like to indicate at this time. Seeing none, I thank you for that. And we will move into the adoption of the January 5th council minutes, please. A mover and a seconder for those. And that is moved by Councillor Van Stone, seconded by Councillor Snowden, that Ashfield, Colburn, Awalwanosh Township Council hereby adopts the January 5th, 2021 council meeting minutes as written. Are there any questions on those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? And that is carried, and I thank you for that. And now for the January 12th council meeting minutes, a mover and a seconder, and that is Councillor Miltonberg moves, seconded by Councillor Forrester, that Ashfield, Colburn, Wawanosh Township Council hereby adopts the January 12th, 2021 council meeting minutes as written. Do we have any questions on those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, 4.0 is open forum, and that's an opportunity for any members of the public to make any comments that they would like on any agenda item that we have in our meeting today. This is, uh, it is not a discussion. It's not a debate. It's not an argument. It is an opportunity for any residents to make a comment that they would like to, to counsel. Brett, are you aware, is there anyone that would like to speak at open forum this morning? Nobody's made me directly aware, but there is a, uh, a raised hand function available to those in attendance. If you wish to speak, if you use that, we will uh, we'll let you in and allow you to, to speak to council. Okay, thank you. So there is a raised hand function. And if you would like uh, to make a comment, please uh, use that function and Brett would uh, let you in at the meeting. We're good. Not uh, not seeing anyone. Okay, thank you very much. On to delegations, and I would like to welcome Selena Whaling Ray to our meeting this morning. Selena, this is a uh, housekeeping bylaw amendment, and I would like to indicate uh, that it is uh, for uh, revised zoning bylaw amendment, uh, speaking to a uh, allowing for a second unit in the AG four zone to be added to the provision. And would you like to address council at this time, please? Good morning. Good morning everyone. Thank you, Mayor McNeil. Um, so as mentioned, based on the feedback from council at the last meeting of council, we have removed that uh, provision in the proposed zoning bylaw housekeeping that includes a second unit in the AG4 zone. Um, other than that, everything's pretty much uh, standard as it was. So I can answer any further questions of council at this time. Thank you very much for that. So this is the for the elimination of the second unit in the AG4. Any comments of council on this? We have discussed it uh, previously. Uh, Deputy Mayor, please. Thank you. I'm, I'm just trying to look it up. I, I got a question on page uh, 69 of the agenda package, not the document itself. Yeah, okay. Um, No, maybe it's actually 69 of the document. Hang on a second here. Yep, no problem. 69. Okay. Speaking to the temporary dwelling. Well, I can't find where I marked it up, but uh, it had to do with the fact that uh, there was a reference to second unit that was embedded in the section on uh, temporary dwellings. 
Yeah, I didn't understand. I'm trying to find it again. Sorry. That's all right. Take your time. You'll get it. Through the mayor, yeah. Roger, or Councilor Watt, are you, Deputy Mayor Watt, are you referring to page 52 of the zoning document, section 3.15? Hang on a second here. I'm rapidly paging. There it is. Thank you very much. It's the uh, the last thing in the blue underlined stuff. So page fifty-two is, is, that, it? is that correct? Fifty-two in the do in the uh, the document. Yes, three point fifteen temporary dwellings. Uh, the very last thing. References second unit. I don't understand why the comment about second units is under temporary dwellings because, in my mind, they're not the same thing. Through the mayor, um, I, I see what the deputy mayor's point is on that topic. I think the purpose of referring to it as a second unit was because the temporary dwelling in the case of the AG1 and AG4 parcels does act as a second unit in the sense that it is a second temporary dwelling unit. Um, so that was the purpose, the purpose of that language, um, I think, in specific regard to septic uh, servicing purposes as well. It would be a whole lot simpler if you just changed it to say temporary dwelling rather than second unit. Um, so through the mayor, we, we can certainly amend that language. It just, we need to then defer on this topic until the next meeting of council. Um, so whatever the direction of council is at this point. No problem. I think we'd rather get it right. Wouldn't we deputy mayor? I would. Okay. Well, it'll never be right, but as clear as we can make it. <laughs> Does that make sense with you, Selena, to make that change? Yep. Whatever the direction is of council, absolutely. Okay. So are there, yeah, uh, CAO, please. I thought this was gonna be addressed in the official plan, no? Uh, so the topic of second units within the AG4 zone and within the agricultural designation uh, is certainly a topic that will be addressed during the official plan review. Um, admittedly, this 3.15 is not a new provision. It's simply been moved from the, um, uh, from where it was previously in the definition section to the general provisions section. So um, this provision already exists in the current bylaw, it's just in a new place. Um, so we can certainly amend this existing provision within this housekeeping, or we can um, wait until the official plan review when we amend the entire second unit scope within the zoning bylaw. So there's a couple different options, whatever council prefers at this time. Thank you for those options. I would lean towards deferring until we incorporated it into the official plan. What do members of council think? Steve nods. Uh, uh, Councillor Meltenberg, please. Um, I actually don't see any problem with deferring it, uh, but I would take actually Roger's lead because uh, he's more about the 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 T's and the I's being crossed and when it's important to do so, where I, or as I tend to write freehand. So <laughs> I will defer to um, Roger's opinion. I, if it's existing, oh, okay, but if we're gonna do it anyway, it doesn't matter. CAO input, please. Do, do you feel it may be appropriate to defer this uh, to the official plan? I don't mean to defer it to official plan. I thought we were going to discuss it at the official plan. That's my that's right. my understanding. Right. Um, maybe Brett yeah. and Florence can chime in on this if they would, please. Brett, please. Yeah, if council wishes we, we could bring this back. There's There could be multiple um, just terminology references to second units and, and second dwellings and temporary dwellings that um, jump throughout the bylaw so um, it would be you know my preference to just clean it all up as part of the OP and then the, the new zoning bylaw where we can go and catch it all we could every time we open this we could find a little a little thing like this and it's it's hard so if possible I'd like to just kind of deal with it all 
the terminology and then when we know we're changing second unit we're changing it we know we're changing it to the right thing so and we're not uh, hashing it again but um whatever council wishes is is fine with me I thank you for your input deputy mayor please i'm quite happy to go ahead with just changing those two words uh this is a clarification thing it's perfectly rational to do it in the housekeeping change but I agree, yes, when we get to the official plan, we need a proper section on second units that's all encompassing that everything refers to. Okay. So what, uh, Councillor Vanstone, please. Um, just quickly, Mr. Mayor, um, I don't see a big problem with it, whether we change it now or change it later. I, I would say whichever is the easiest for our staff in the planning department, because we will change it one way or another. <clears throat> yep, that, that's a fair comment. Selena, which, which, is, um, uh, which do you recommend from your standpoint? Would you like to incorporate this into the official plan or would you like to change the wording this morning? Um, to the mayor, I think I would echo Brett's comments in that I, I, um, I certainly understand the rationale be behind changing the second unit to temporary dwelling. However, um, to defer this would mean taking it to the next council meeting, deferring that review, uh, or sorry, deferring that, uh, that passing, I'm losing my words here, just deferring the implementation of the zoning bylaw housekeeping. I agree with Brett that I think there is probably you know, we've read through this so many times, there's probably terminology that could be changed throughout it. And I think um, to update the housekeeping now and implement the uh, additional changes within, the, within this housekeeping and uh, dealing with this matter when we deal with the zoning bylaw more succinctly at the end of the year would be my preference. But um, either way, not a major uh, difference whether we change the terminology now or later. Okay, what is the will of council? Uh, Councillor Miltenberg, please. I recommend we pass it as it is now and uh, address it all with the official plan review. So you would like to change the wording this morning and pass this, is that correct? N no, or defer, or include this in the official plan. I would like to pass it as presented and deal with the topic when we change everything in the official plan. Are you good with that, Deputy Mayor? Yeah, you're good. Okay. With that, I would entertain a mover and a seconder, if you would, please. And that is moved by Councillor Miltenberg, seconded by Councillor Forrester. Whereas the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Ashfield, Colburn, Wawanosh, has held a public meeting pursuant to section 34, brackets 12 of the Planning Act RSO 1990 with respect to a proposed rezoning bylaw. And whereas certain changes have been made to the proposed bylaw after holding of the public meeting. Now, therefore, the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Ashfield, Coburn, Walwanosh hereby resolves that pursuant to section 34 and brackets 17 of the Planning Act RSO 1990, no further notice is to be given in respect of the proposed bylaw. Any further questions, comments? We're good. All in favor of the motion. And that is carried. I thank you for that. And on to 5.2, the official plan review. And I would entertain a, a now, Selena, would you like to make any comments to us on that, please? Uh, thanks, Mayor McNeil. I don't have much to share. I think the report largely speaks for itself. Um, Council will know on the second page that we do have that proposed amended timeline um, based on current circumstances. Um, and then in terms of uh, a special meeting date for the Section 26 meeting, um, if, if the will of Council is to pass a resolution to initiate the official plan, I would recommend that um, shooting for something in the first or second week of March would be reasonable at this time. I concur with that. Uh, Clerk Witherspoon, do you have any comments you'd like to make uh, to us on this subject? I was just gonna echo what Selena had stated that we need to, um, sh should council wish to proceed with 
the official plan review, then we will need to schedule a special council meeting as we do have to give notice. Yes, correct. No, that's good. So if we check our calendars and the comment was into March, I, I'm is the 9th of March a, a reasonable day? It's on a Tuesday. Does that give enough time frame? Or what does uh, Deputy Mayor, please? Thank you. I have a couple of concerns that might alter the answer to that question. There's three references in here to putting notices in the local papers. Uh, I think that's totally inadequate. I thought we discussed the fact that we're going to do mailings to the uh, addresses of record for all the property owners. Thank you for that. Selena, response, please. Um, through the mayor, we will be doing individual address uh, mail outs to property owners that includes the timeline for the entire official plan review. However, under the Planning Act, we do have certain ways in which we are required to give notice um, legislatively. So the mail outs will be additional um, and will go out as the um, official plan review proceeds with that information pertaining to individual properties. But the actual um, formal Section 26 meeting does is required to be advertised in the local paper as well. So um, the local paper advertisements will have to occur throughout the process, but we the intent is fully as discussed at the special uh, meeting of council to do those individual mail outs and alternative forms of communication as well. And that's the uh, Deputy Mayor, please. Uh, forgive me if I'm not understanding, but that doesn't answer my objection. I'm not objecting to publishing it in the newspapers. It's all the people who don't read the darn things that concern me. And I think that's a substantial portion of our community. So I got to turn my volume off. Yeah, no, that's no, your point is well taken, Roger. And I know we're going to address that uh, later agenda item this morning. And we want to improve our communication strategy. So uh, to kind of paraphrase, yes, it needs to appear in the paper. However, we want more than that. We want uh, communication in the manner that our residents would like to receive it. Clerk, Florence, please. Um, yes, we will be endeavoring to utilize whatever tools we have necessary to get this information out. Right, now, Deputy Mayor, does that uh, appease you from the standpoint, it will appear in the paper, however, there will be, as Selena commented, mailings and we will also communicate um, to our residents in whatever form uh, that is uh, desirable. Uh, Deputy Mayor, please. If mailings go out to, to the landowners at the same time as the things get published in the newspaper, then I'm happy. Uh, if, if we're using the newspaper to advertise something we're not sending to the general mailing list of, of all property owners, I'm not happy at all. Correct. And, and yeah, that point's well taken. And so there will be mailings on this. Uh, Clerk Florence, please. Given the time frame, if um, council does choose to hold that special meeting for March 9th, um, there will be adequate time. Um, we will make it happen to be able to get that information out to the lists um, as determined. Yeah, and that's the that is the desire of council. CAO, please. I just want clarification from staff uh, and Selena and Florence in particular. This mail out, this will be just to the people that it's affected or to every, as every resident or a landowner in the municipality. Um, through the mayor, my understanding would be that uh, if we were to be doing a mail out for the section 26 meeting that everyone, uh, every landowner would receive one, um, given that it is a township wide process at this point. Okay, good. I just wanted clarification. It's good to hear that. Oh, yeah. I don't want everyone to assume that there that is, but it sounds like uh, Selena indicated that it'll be mailed out to, to every landowner. Um, and the confirmation was just received from Selena. That's great. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. And that is our desire of council. So uh, the proposed date of March 9th, is that a workable date for all of council and staff? I see the thumbs up. Staff, you can make that work. We're not aware. At what time would you like it? 
Um, through the mayor, I think it, it, it depends what, I mean, obviously our current council meetings are held during the day and that seems to work well for everyone. Um, I know other municipalities choose to hold their special official plan review meetings in the evening just in an effort to allow um, folks who work during the day to attend. I know that obviously with the pandemic and the current lockdown procedures, folks are maybe at home more often than they normally be. So I think um, there, there's pros and cons to having it in the morning as per usual or in the evening or afternoon as well. I, I think it just depends what the direction of council is on this. Yes, and I concur with that. Councillor Miltenberg, please. I would like to go to an evening meeting. People what time, Jennifer? Uh, uh, I would go with whatever evening meetings usually are. I'm not a um, big attender of them as you know, as a dairy farmer, but we can all make it work. So whatever is would be a standard time, I'd be happy with. But the people that work from home are actually working during the day. Um, and right. the people in the essential services also work during the day. So I'd like to go in the evening. I, okay. don't, I don't want to go in the evening. I suggest we go in the I evening. Know. No, I, I know. I concur with that 100%. Clerk Florence, please. I would suggest a 7 p.m. start time if this is the will of council. It seems to be most of our other committee and board meetings begin at 7 p.m. So um, if March 9th at 7 p.m. is suitable, then we can schedule this meeting to happen at that time. That's exactly what I was thinking. Is, is council all good with March 9th at 7 p.m.? We're good? I think, yep, okay. So uh, we'll incorporate that into the motion and I would entertain a mover and a seconder to initiate the official plan review, please. And that is moved by Councillor Miltonberg, seconded by Deputy Mayor Watt, that Ashfield Colburn Walwanosh Township Council hereby commences a review of the township's official plan under section 26 of the Planning Act. And further that a special meeting of council open to the public be scheduled for Tuesday, March 9th, 7 p.m. to discuss the revisions to the official plan that may be required. Any further discussion on this item? Uh, Deputy Mayor, please. Yep, uh, third item from the bottom of the chart, there's a reference to uh, county committee of the whole day one, that no longer exists. We did away with committees day one and two, it's just council day one. Thank you for that clarification, absolutely correct. And staff has noted that. Okay, any further comments? We have a motion on the floor, all in favor of the motion. And that is carried and I thank you for that. So please uh, mark that in our calendars. Okay, on to the payment of the accounts and the current accounts, and I would entertain a mover and a seconder for that, and that is moved by Councillor Miltonberg, seconded by Councillor Forrester, that Ashfield Colburn Walwanosh Township Council hereby authorizes the payment of the January 21 accounts as, prevented, as presented. Do we have any questions on these accounts? Councillor Vanstone first, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I've got two or three here. On page one, right at the very top, we paid for some wheat damage. Was it on uh, Lawnsboro Line? Uh, Could you just correct? Um, I think Brian well, can probably answer that question for you. Welcome, yes. Alan and Brian. Okay, that was back on uh, River Road or River Line um, at the back where we turned the trucks around. Um, it's always been a turnaround and um, in the spring, we, um, the trucks have backed in a little further than they should have maybe when they were resurfacing gravel. So there's a little bit of wheat damage back there. So um, be invoices for it, so. Okay, all right, I just wondered, because uh, I didn't, <laughs> uh, Lonsboro line kind of threw me off, but if the river road, all right. Um, it's back at the turnaround the on the river road. Is, uh, page 21, and 22, um, on page 21, we paid so much money towards the fire chief. And is that, what is that? <clears throat> I 
I think maybe Clerk Florence would like to make a comment and then uh, our uh, CAO, please. So that is for, um, as per the agreement with the Township of Huron Kinloss, we were to uh, pay for um, the services of the fire chief from the 1st of November to the end of the year. And that is the prorated amount. Okay, so that's, so the, that's the cost of far? the service to have. Yes, that is, yes. For that's 2020, yeah. Okay. Um, and then on page 22, uh, there's a there's a bill from uh, or to the township of North Huron for fire. Uh, I'm 17. Wait till I get to that page. Oh, too far. Okay, 22. $1,708.94, Blythe Fire, ACW share for protective insurance and control. Is that for mutual aid? No, that was for a fire call that we had in, in Auburn. So North Huron responded. So our agreement with North Huron is you pay X amount of dollars a year. However, when there's a call out, you have to pay for that call out. So that was a call out for that particular fire in Auburn. Okay, so we pay X amount of dollars to have them and then per fire call. That's that correct. Right? That's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Any further questions? Uh, Gloria, please. Councillor Fisher. On uh, page seven, I, I was just curious about how all this works. Um, we're paying to clean the Ben Miller Hall, but I don't think it's being used, is it? Just wondered how. I can probably answer that, Mr. Mayor. Yes, it has been used. Um, I've seen at least six times there's been people down there. Uh, very few, maybe six people at a time, but there, there has been used. <clears throat> that was before we had the lockdown, I guess, down to five. And then on the next <clears throat> page, I believe- now, is, Well, just before we leave that one, I, I think Ellen would like to make a comment and then our CAO, please. Okay. Well, I was just gonna make a comment that uh, Karen uh, Fisher has just submitted that and that was for the entire year. That wasn't just recently, so that was, uh, for the entire year. So that was even before the pandemic and during the pandemic as Bill oh. indicated. Thank you. And the, Thanks and for that I, clarification. You're good with that, Ellen? Yeah, perfect. Okay, please continue, Gloria. And then on, the, on uh, page eight, we passed a bylaw about single-use plastics and I see we're buying foam cups and we're buying hot drink cups. I, I and I think our treasurer can respond to that, please, if you would, Ellen. So those foam cups, my understanding is they were bought in error and they were returned. And we, we only buy the um, biodegradable compostable cups now. So those were exchanged for the proper cups. Okay, thank you for that. And I see a nodding of the head of Brian. Are you okay with that, Gloria? Yeah, as long as we're not using stuff that doesn't recycle. Or right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Uh, Councillor Snowblum, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, on page five of the account, there is um, um, an indication for line paint, line painting for eleven thousand dollars, and the date is in December. Would that um, have happened, that line painting before December? Yeah, that was ha that happened um, in the uh, late summer, fall, after our paving was completed. The county of Huron does our line painting, and they just got the invoices out to us in December. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Any further questions? Seeing none, uh, we do have a mover and a seconder. All in favor of the motion. And that is carried. Thank you. On to the payment of the previous month's accounts. I would entertain a mover and a seconder for that. And that is moved by Councillor Vanstone, seconded by Councillor Forrester. 
that Ashfield Colburn Awawanosh Township Council hereby approves the payment of the December 2020 accounts in the amount of $2,650,386.74. Do we have any questions on any of these lines? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? And that is carried, thank you. And on to the summary of the revenue expenditure reports, and that is for the township, the Lucknow District Fire Board, Lucknow District Medical Center, Lucknow District Rec Center from January to December. And I would entertain a mover and a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Fisher, seconded by Councillor Snowblin, that Ashfield Colburn Awalmanosh Township Council adopts the summary revenue expenditure reports of the treasurer's written. Do we have any questions on these? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? And that is carried, thank you. On to department reports, we have nothing on water. On to our building uh, department, our chief building officer's report. That is for information of council. Does and Brad is here to respond to any questions of that. Are there any questions on that? Uh, councillors, no, you're good. Uh, Councillor Miltonberg, please. Jennifer, you, I know you have something great to say, however, you may be melted, muted. Seriously. <laughs> Okay, Brett, I, I like the comparison you did in dollar uh, amount. I'm wondering, is that um, due to an increased number of applications or an increase in the price of everything? It would be a combination, probably a little bit of both. Um, we've seen a, a large number of actual residential houses being built, which always impacts the, the numbers at that, that end. And we've got a little more uh, agricultural building um, this year as well, which which drives those numbers up than we had uh, the previous year. So there's various things that, that come into play when, when we look at this, but it would be, be a, pretty much a combination of everything. And to continue, Mr. Mayor? Please. Uh, well, uh, just a comment. It looks like you're very busy and I know that you got an assistant. Are you... Um... <laughs> Are you able to manage now? Are you catching up on the backlog? How's it going in there? Uh, we're still, it, it was very, very busy, busier than we even anticipated. Um, we're, yeah, like the backlog's still there a bit, but we're um, gaining through even strong into January again here with the years off to a strong start, which is quite unusual. Um, I would just like to compliment the, the staff, adding the staff at the time we did uh, turned out to be a, a very, very good move given how the year went. Um, it wasn't uh, the easiest year and I would just like to compliment Sarah Louise and Joy. Um, they both got uh, came in and then the pandemic hit and then uh, yeah, we haven't really sat in one spot the same since and we we're busier than we've ever been. So they've done an excellent job and um, just like to make council aware of that as well. Thank you. And, and thank you for that. When we see as, as Councillor Miltonberg commented the year over year from 19 to 20 and the amount of activity. Uh, I have commented before and to everyone, we have a very progressive municipality. And thank you very much to all of our residents for your commerce and to our staff for accommodating this. You, Brett and yourself and your staff have done an excellent job. We really appreciate it on behalf of council. Thank you. Any further comments on this? And I would like to suggest that uh, this is the envy of a lot of municipalities. Any further comments on this? Job well done. We, uh, what's, what's your projection for this year, uh, Brett? We know how we ended uh, uh, 20. What's your number for this year that's your goal? Not to put you on the spot at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, we could, if we could do the same, that, that would be great. Um, it's again, it's it's off to a strong start. So we're hoping that this continues and we're hoping by uh, going down the path of the official plan update and the zoning bylaw updates that uh, we can continue to to see the municipality grow and uh, prosper. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, it's, it's so far, it's looking like another strong year. Awesome, great. Any further questions or comments of uh, council? This is for information. 
With that, thank you very much, uh, Brett. And we look forward to uh, continued uh, commerce. I, I should have asked council for your approval at the outset. I would like to flip 7.5.1 and 7.5.2. I would like to discuss our communication strategy in advance of the at-large system of electoral representation. Will council uh, give me that latitude, please? See, thumbs up. Okay, thank you very much for that. And I, I apologize, I should have done that at the outset. So I would like to address our communication strategy. And uh, it has been brought up by other members of council. And we need to improve our communication strategy at ACW. We are a very growing municipality and part of the growing pains is communication. And I will suggest that it is very appropriate that we improve it. 30 years ago, everyone read the newspaper for information. Some still do, lots don't. And our residents would like to be communicated with in a different way. Many on social media platforms and not just one, a variety of them. And I think it is appropriate as we move forward that we have improve our communication strategy and communicate with our residents on issues in the way that they would like to be communicated with. I would also like to preface my comments by saying that as warden of Huron County, the county has a communication team and it is very effective in disseminating the communication from council to either our various staffs or to the residents of Huron County. And our communication team on a particular issue at the county would ask for the direction of my messaging, would develop it and then come back for approval and then it would be disseminated from there. And I think that a similar format to this to have a communication coordinator at ACW would be very beneficial in communicating with our residents. So with that, Florence, do you have any comments that you would like to make to us and then council will discuss them, please. Good morning, everybody again. Um, so I've prepared this report um, at the request of Mayor McNeil and um, I would just also like to preface in there that there will be some budgetary uh, considerations that will need to be made um, once the strategy has been brought forward. Um, there are some elements in there that will require some resources in order to have it um, executed. So um, staff is, is very eager and um, actually quite excited about the opportunity to, to implement this kind of um, change for ACW. Thank you for that, Florence. Do any members of council have any comments that they would like to make on this? I'm gonna start with Councillor Vanstone and then Deputy Mayor Watt, please. Okay, um, I guess this will be through to Florence, uh, Mr. Mayor. Then um, the current staff will be able to handle this. It'll the uh, money that she's talking about will be the implementation of maybe software and whatnot, um, or are they looking at more staff, which, um, I'd, I'd be kind of negative right now to think about. <clears throat> I think the, um, once we, sorry, through the mayor, um, I believe that once we've had a chance to review what the communication strategy will look like wholesomely, we will have a better idea of what that means for staff and also financially as well. Is that fair enough? Councilor well, Van Stono. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I really didn't get an answer. I just said that we're going to do it in the future. So I guess if uh, long as we have all that information before we do anything, I'd be good with that. Thanks. <clears throat> right. And, and I would like to suggest that we have access to some very talented staff that are very proficient in this area of expertise. Deputy Mayor and then Councillor Forrester, please. Thank you. Uh, I'm very much in favor of this. I think it's long overdue. We've been talking about this for two or three administrations. Uh, a couple of specific concerns. Uh, I think there's an opportunity here to meld this with the community support coordinator function, uh, which is a good thing. 
as for number five, developing a new website, uh, I think that's important, whether it's new or updated. Uh, the current website was produced by a uh, web developer in, in uh, British Columbia because that was the best response to the RFP of the day. Uh, but I think we need to put ourselves on a footing where the, the thing is backed up by a, a professional entity that is likely to be in business five years after it's created. So I'm very much in favor of that one, too. Points points well taken, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor Forrester and then Councillor Miltenberg, please. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm also in favor of this because I get hearing kin loss and blue water pop up in my face. Facebook all the time and this would have been a good way to to solve the communication about the dissolve or the getting rid of the word system at voting time okay thanks absolutely point well taken uh, Councillor Miltenberg please uh yes thank you Mr. Mayor uh th sometimes I think Roger's psychic because I think and then he says it um so <laughs> I, I totally agree with what Roger said. We have been talking about this for multiple terms. I am delighted to move forward. And I would just like to uh, piggyback on what Wayne just said. Um, if I knew what the taxpayers of our, of our, of our municipality knew, um, I would have signed the petition and be thinking exactly what they're thinking on the next item on the agenda, exactly. Um, and that's all about communication, not facts. So I'm really excited to move forward on this and the sooner the better. And I'm hoping that uh, Mark can use his wizardry or maybe it's uh, Florence and find some COVID uh, response money for this because I think that this problem has been existing for a long time, but it has been uh, moving way, way faster because of COVID because the way Organically, people in ACW find things out as they talk about it with their neighbors, and that's just not happening anymore. And there needs to be a response to try to help people communicate in a new reality. Thank you. I concur with that, uh, Councillor Miltonberg. COVID has exasperated the need for improved communication, without a doubt. You're absolutely right. Okay, uh, Councillor Snowman, did you have a comment, please? Just to echo what uh, many of the others have already said, I'm fully in favor of this. And Mr. Mayor, both you and I have uh, expressed several times what a progressive um, council this is. And I believe with uh, you as our mayor, you're going to make this happen um, with the uh, assistance and guidance of our very capable and progressive staff. And um, I agree with uh, what Roger said that this is something that we might look at with the community support person that we've been talking about as well. I think it dovetails very nicely um, with uh, how we see that, um, that role, um, especially now with the way things are with lockdowns and, and COVID and restricted communication um, in, in person. So very much in favor of this and I look forward to seeing how it all unfolds. Thank, thank you for your comments. Uh, Councillor Fisher, please. I agree, and I'm also in favor of, of improving our communication. I hope we don't have to spend a lot of money. I think it's just got to be um, revamped and modernized. And I think, you know, if we were better at our communication, the community would understand where we're how we think as a, as a council and uh, like this has been, a, oh, it's been in the works for many years before we implemented the at-large candidates in the last election. So it's not a new thing and it's nothing, but people don't know what council's thinking, you know, and, and so that'd be excellent to be able to get uh, that out. That's. That's all. Perfect. And thank you for that. Councillor Snowden, please. Um, in light of some of the comments about the expense or potential expense of this, I don't know that we really need to reinvent the wheel here. I think it's a matter of, of looking at other agencies, whether they're municipalities, whether they're um, county or township or school board or 
uh, conservation, other agencies that are doing something really well and perhaps dovetailing on some of their strategies and communication. So um, uh, I hope it's not an expensive venture, but I also see that you don't need to reinvent the wheel here. Great comments, uh, Councillor Snowblen. Uh, Clerk Florence, please. Yes, I should reiterate that the the anticipated expense is not in the procurement of the communication strategy itself. Um, we have lots of examples. Um, you know, we, we don't. We, <laughs> we like uh, to call it research and development when we're working with local municipalities. We do borrow and and and. Um, help each other out when it comes to this kinds of things. So um, those resources are definitely available to us and we do model a lot on what we've, uh, our, co our colleagues in, other, in the county and elsewhere um, do. The expense part of it would be more um, the software or any additional help we might need in order to exercise these, um, these um, elements of the communication strategy once it is finished. Um, so uh, again, it's something that I think is timely, um, very timely, um, and staff is excited about it. And obviously we're gonna look at ways as to making it the most efficient um, with the resources that we have and to see what else is uh, um, available and what opportunities we have. Thank you for that Florence and I concur with that 100%. Councillor uh, Fisher, please. And I was thinking as this moves along and we get things uh, the way we want them, I'm sure a lot of it will be uh, online, but we could have the capability of printing things off and then we, we can use the kiosk for our Amish community and use put these things up inside the kiosks to be read too. They, right. they, they'll be able to go together. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. And it's been commented uh, by Councillor Snowden, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And, and I love Florence's analogy of R&D when we kind of other uh, municipalities and, and uh, councils that do things in a very effective way and incorporate that into our, our uh, communication strategy. And I do commit to this council and to our residents to improve our communication strategy in ACW from this day going forward. So, I think we have a uh, great uptake from all of council. So Florence, you have the mandate um, uh, from council on moving forward with this commitment for a communication strategy and come back to us in the future with developments. That fair? Staff, we're good with that. Mark, you're good with that? Gotta like it. Perfect, thank you very much everyone. And now back to uh, 7.5.1 and that is the Dissolution of the wards and slash at large system of electoral representation. We uh, council have been provided with a copy of a letter received from Suzanne Cutting and Evan Hickey, along with a copy of a list of names that object to the passing of bylaw number 89 2020 on the 15th day of December. We have also provided uh, council with a copy of an open letter from myself as mayor in the regard to this. It was posted on the township website. And I would like to also indicate uh, that on uh, Sunday night, uh, Mark and I received an additional uh, 106 names that were uh, signed to that petition. Everyone has read the letter that I referred to. And it uh, is the impetus of this is that every elector in the municipality can vote for every member of council. Implementing an at-large system of electoral enables all the electorate to vote for all of the members of council. The ward system does not provide this opportunity. Do any members of council have any comments that they would like to make on this subject? Councillor Miltenberg, please. Uh, yeah, I have actually, not surprisingly, quite a few comments. Uh, and before I begin, Mr. Mayor, I'd like a little leeway with you because I think that in normal times, we would have had a delegation to council and we would have um, people that would have the ability to ask questions. And so I know we do not debate things, but I would like to convey some information that this council already knows that would be in direct response to the concerns in the letter. Would, shall I proceed with that? Please, absolutely. Okay. Uh, to start with, I'm a, a counselor from the ACW 
uh, municipality, but I am specifically from the Ashfield Ward. And the reason I ran in the Ashfield Ward was not to represent the area, but because I had signs from the year, the election before, and I didn't want to buy new signs. I do not represent Ashfield. I represent the entire municipality and indeed the oath of office states the entire municipality, not the ward. Were I to represent Ashfield over everyone else, I would be in direct violation of my oath and I don't do that. I also wanna say that moving forward, were this uh, system that we have continue, I would still run in the Ashfield ward because I still have signs, but I am not an Ashfield counselor. And that is what the ward system um, gives the impression of. Um, and by that token, if it were to stay as it is now, it would be much easier for me. I have the signs. I know where to put them. I have all my neighbors who know me. They don't necessarily like me, but I hope that they think I try hard. So um, I am in favor of the bylaw, not for personal gain. It's directly against what's easiest for me, but because I think it's the right thing. So I would like to address a couple of concerns in that letter. Let me just pull it up here. The first specific thing I'd like to mention is it seemed to be done in a hasty manner, 28 days from the day it was brought to the table. And Gloria alluded to it earlier. This process actually started for me in 2014. In 2014, we were a complete ward system, which meant you got to vote for the two councillors in your ward and the Reeve, which was the mayor at the time, which meant that of seven councillors, you only got to vote for three. That's what a ward system does. You get to vote for the minority and you have actually, in my mind, no control over who is on council. And at that, it really drove it home that election because I felt there were some deeply flawed cat uh, people running who were one issue and I couldn't do anything about it because I couldn't vote for anyone else. So that is what started for me the look for a better system. Now throughout that term, um, I did a lot of canvassing of other councillors and other municipalities. And I, I did it in part because in that term, I went to AMO in Ottawa a couple of times, paid for by them to speak on behalf of municipalities. So I was in Ottawa all by myself for several days. So either I was gonna sit in the room or I was gonna go out and talk to strangers who I didn't know. And I went out and just started talking to everyone. And my topic of conversation was, how do you do it in your, in your municipality if you do the ward system, does it work? And I will tell you, I found one counselor who said the ward system they used worked well. And I wish I remembered the municipality. I remember I found one because I was so surprised. Everybody else who had ward systems said it didn't work well because people in wards tended to argue a lot at municipal council because they were all trying to protect their own area. And the point is we are one area. So, this process that we're doing right now happens every four years. So when this came forward in 2017, we had talked about it at council back then. So we asked for a staff report to what we could do about the election for 2018. And there was mixed, uh, mixed uh, reaction on council. Some people adamantly wanted to get rid of the ward system. Some people saw the benefit but we're afraid that our taxpayers wouldn't understand why. And so at that point, I put forward one of the options which I had heard about in Ottawa. And that was one person from each ward and the rest to run at large. And in this way, at least you could vote for five out of the seven. And that's, this is democracy. And so democracy is, a system where the whole population gets to vote for all eligible members who's representing them. So when you see your representative goes to, uh, you know, Parliament Hill, they're representing your whole municipality with another group. So we need a true democracy in ACW where everyone gets to vote for whoever is representing us. So in 2017, 
the decision was made to move forward with a system that did both elements, one in the ward and two at large. And it was an imperfect system and everyone agreed on it. But the thinking was that in the four years, we would work hard to make sure that our population understood the move and why we were doing it that way and what we were moving towards. Clearly, we didn't communicate that, okay? So when we talked about it and it seemed to be moving fast for our population, we, and maybe not everyone here, but I specifically had been talking about it for seven years. Uh, all the rest of us had talked about it three years ago and continued on. So this was not a new subject. It was not done in haste. So that is the first thing is that this was not fast and it was not, not thought of. We actually thought about it and talked about it a lot four years ago or three years ago or whenever it was. So now moving forward with the situation that we have now. And may I continue, Mr. Mayor? So, yes, please do. So what we have is an imperfect system in my mind because you still don't get to vote for seven out of seven people. The ward system, we actually are not a true ward system. In the true ward system, you have each ward has a separate budget and they, they run it separately. North Huron does that. They have three different budgets for their three wards. That's the true ward system. We are one municipality with different electors and we have a non-contentious uh, council because of it. Um, so I am very much in favor of moving past the ward system that we have now. It doesn't change anything. It changes the perception of what is happening because it's not right that you you, the days where the person who had the counselor got the road paved is long gone. And the day of the back, your, back door deals that nobody knew about is long gone. We are supposed to be transparent. We are supposed to be accountable to everyone. And we can't be if we're representing our small area because you are taking an oath to represent the big area. Now, here's the problem. Everyone here understands it. And there may be six people listening have maybe gotten the, you know, that explanation. But the significant amount of people who are against the dissolution of the ward system don't understand any of it. If I was not the one driving, one of the drivers, I think the whole, everybody's on the bus, but I, I feel like I was one of the ones who started it. I, I would have signed the petition and I would, be, I would be livid right now. So there is a reason that there are people upset. And moving forward as is, you know, discounts their fear and they have a valid fear because this happened in the old days where people got what they want because they knew the guy on council. Their, their reaction is one based on fear. My reaction is one based on knowledge, but they don't have my knowledge. So I know we all want to move forward, but I thought the last line of this letter was very good or one of the last lines. Hang on, let me find it. We feel that taxpayers are entitled to more information on how the two different systems function and the option for input before making such an important bylaws pass. I don't disagree with that. We talked about that four years ago. We just didn't get the communication out there. So I am, we do have till December to move forward on this. I'm not exactly sure what motion I'm making or what my suggestion is. If we can just put this on pause until our communication style is out there. Yes, we are the elect officials and we, we are voting to represent the people. But right now the people we are representing don't have the knowledge that we do. And that's not fair. That's my comments, I think. Okay, thank you for that, Jennifer. And I, I'm going to go to Deputy Mayor then Councillor Van Stone, and then Councillor Forrester, please. Thank you, Fabi. Just want to comment on two aspects of what Jennifer said. The first one is it's called quantum entanglement. It occurs in your brain and transfers instantly to mine. It's not psychic. The next one is uh, I can trace it back to 2010 because I remember 
the all candidates meeting that was held in the Dungan and Egg Society building, and where somebody from the audience asked me my thoughts on the ward system and whether or not we should revamp it to have a lakeshore, lakefront ward. Uh, my comment on the latter aspect of that was that I thought that was rather silly and unnecessary. My comment on the first part of it was I had no problem with the ward system unless it started to demonstrate it being the source of us versus them attitude. And over the next four years on council, I saw several of those, sometimes from members of council, sometimes from members of the public during open sessions. Uh, so my thoughts on this haven't changed. I think the best thing we can do is to do away with the ward system. We have some uh, upset people who are upset because all of the reasons Jennifer enumerated. Uh, we can do something about the communication program, but the building of trust that they're not going to lose their representation is going to take not just years or decades, probably generations to solve. We need to start working on it now. Thank you for that, Roger. Uh, Councillor Van Stone, please. Yes, um, I'd like to thank Jennifer for stepping in and um, you know laying that out the way it is. And um, I agree. I I think we should do away with the word system, but this is very important to a lot of people. So maybe we'll have to table this for a couple months and get more input and get more. Um, I guess information out to these people because um, if 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 it was a true ward system, then Glory and I would sit there and we wouldn't vote for anything in Nashville because we want all that money to come to Coburn, and that isn't the way you sit there. Like right now, we're working on different aspects all through the township, like uh, Port here or Port Albert, for instance. Um, I'm not going to be a negative Nelly on that. I'm, I'm going to make sure we spend our money wisely like we do in any any circumstance. But just because that's not in my ward, I, I don't negative have a negative feeling towards it. So, and I think that's the way all counselors should look at it. And that's why I think the ward system can be very negative if you get, um, it could almost be like uh, three different wards and you have two vote against the third because they don't want the money to go there, which isn't the way council should run. So, um, but in the same instance, we have a whole lot of uh, ratepayers that are concerned. So maybe it's time just to slow down a little bit um, and let them catch up with their information, um, but maybe not. Uh, I'm willing to do whatever the council decides because I do believe that the ward system should be done with, and this should be one municipality, not three wards. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you for that. Just before I go to Councillor Forrester, you know, uh, Councillor Vanstone, you brought up different times when we discuss a subject that everyone in our municipality deserves to be treated the same, exactly. equal. There is no preference and there's no discrimination. And that is the way this council governs, and that speaks to the at-large system when all of our residents can vote for all of the council members. We make decisions in the best interests of everyone in our municipality, not where we live. Councillor Forrester, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I concur with uh, Jennifer's words there. I think a lot of this is over fear. I know I come from the smallest ward. I was made well aware of that, that... If this goes through, there'll probably be no representation from Wallenosh. And I, I totally get that because we just don't have the voters that Ashfield and Coburn do have. But, and I also was brought to my attention that the demographics in Wallenosh is a little different and they really don't understand. So I, I think if we communicate better that this could become better. So that's all I have to say, but Okay, thanks. Oh, thanks for that. And, and, you know, we've already addressed our communication and we are going to improve that. And I guess I personally have great faith in the residents, the electorate of ACW, that they will elect the council that they feel will represent them in the most equitable way and make decisions in the best interest of all residents of our municipality. I have faith in our electorate. Uh, Councillor Forster, please. 
Um, it was also brought to my attention when amalgamation happened. What was this an unhappy marriage that it was forced, or is that true? Or that, it was brought to my attention, anyways. I didn't know that. Uh, well, I yeah, I'm not the one to answer that one. I see a volunteer and Councillor Vanstone, please. I guess I'm kind of long in the tooth, but I was there when amalgamation happened. So, um, no, well, it, I, and Wayne, you're right. It was forced. The government said that we must amalgamate or try to cut costs. Um, and then each municipality was allowed to go out and look um, and to see which municipality would work best with them. So it turned out that the three municipalities got together. Um, they worked out a, a, an agreement that they all could work with. And um, I think it's been for the best. So uh, that's more or less the history on it. <clears throat> There's no question about that, Councillor Van Stone. And you know, the fact that we have a, a rural municipality, we don't have a town or a city that they do in some other municipalities. And I know from experience that municipalities that chose not to collaborate put themselves at a definite disadvantage. And that's just reality. And that's the reality of the day. Uh, Councillor Fisher, please. And that was like 20 years ago. And I feel like this has been a natural progression of the original amalgamation that slowly we've, we've melded into one. And that is how this current council sees the municipality. We're one. And I think people forget it's one budget, one pot of money. And we do the best for the entire municipality with that. Um, but it's been, I think it's been a natural progression of coming together. And it's been a long time. You're absolutely correct. Great point. Councillor Snowblin, did you have a comment you wanted to make? I would just echo uh, much of what um, so many people have already said, but I guess um, two things I bring my comments come from number one, being a newcomer uh, to Huron County, as well as to ACW. And um, also as one of the first, myself and Gloria, the first elected at-large councillors. And um, I can tell you when I was campaigning back in 2018, I was a little jealous that I wasn't in a, in a campaigning and award system because I would have saved an awful lot of money on gas and I would have saved probably an awful lot of money or a lot of time um, in, in getting to know folks. But I went down every road in the township and um, it was um, a bit of a groundhog day trying to explain to folks exactly what an at-large counselor was. But I have to say there was, there was no objection that I recall. People just thought it seemed natural and they seemed to be in favor of it. Um, Mr. Mayor, you also mentioned something about, you know, um, making certain that we are all voting as a, as a group. And I, I would be concerned that if there was a person in a ward that was voting for somebody just based on their, their last name, um, I think that, that's a slippery slope when you start voting for people based on popularity. I think as Jennifer um, mentioned that this is a democracy and hopefully you exercise that right and make uh, an informed uh, decision when you go to the to the ballot box. Um, I also looked up some and uh, did a little bit of research, and there are a few neighboring townships that don't have a ward system. And I bet if you ask them, they feel as though it was running perfectly well. Um, maybe we dropped the ball a little bit on the communications on this. Um, and I do hear your, your concerns about possibly deferring this decision, um, but I don't know that it's going to change anything. Um, I, I, I will go along with deferring it if that's the wish of the majority, but 
I feel that if it's not going to change anything, why don't we go ahead and go forward with making certain that our communication is is precise and um, thought out and extensive on this so that when people go to the ballot box in 2022, a year and a half from now or, or so, um, that they've had time to really examine the candidates, examine the counselors. And uh, as I said, I don't know that it's gonna change anything. I think the council, has spoken right now and feels in favor of making it a, a, a one ward. That's my comment, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Yep, thank you very much for that. Uh, Councillor Miltenberg, please. Uh, I actually echo Anita right now. While I think it's important that people have input I would not be happy if I was getting input if I knew it was a political stunt. You know, I, for one, have talked to, I'm going to guess upwards of 50 people in different municipalities. And I have a lot of, of, of knowledge and firsthand um, stories, anecdotal, admittedly, by counselors of, of what is wrong and what is right. And I, I go back to that, that the outrage is, is fear-based, not knowledge-based. So I think that it's, it's important that we acknowledge that fear, that we acknowledge we have to tell them what's going on, and we make a concentrated effort. And if they are unhappy with me saying this, the good news is they can now vote me out, because otherwise they couldn't. I'm a for lifer because Ashfield will vote for me and then Wawanosh and Colburn at this point, too bad, you can't vote for me. But this way you can. So I, I'm not afraid to take an unpopular stance, but I, and I, I truly understand it. I just don't un agree with it. And sometimes the answer is, is, is no, even though you understand it. So I would like to move forward, but I would like to in, in, include in that communication specific information, small bullets. I mean, we can talk about the how later, but um, the reason we did this in, in just to recap, we, we are aware it's not due till December, 2021, but we had had multiple discussions about it before. So we were just getting the paperwork out of the way. We knew we had another 11 months, but you have a year to file it. So we did it in the first year as a proactive council. And we have a year to get the message out. And if we, by December, have anyone thinking to appeal this, I would suggest you have until December that you would actually listen to the messaging, fundraise or whatever you need to do, and then bring it forward later in the year when you have time and see if we can't get the message out. But ultimately, I think Roger is correct. This is going to take years. We have been doing... Uh, all of us representing everyone, but nobody's been able to see it. And we haven't got that message out. And they have decades of a different way of working where they didn't know what was going on. It was on a need to know basis. And I had a friend who died in his 90s a few years ago and he talked about it back when he was on council about the backdoor deals and people getting things because they knew the counselor because that's just how it worked. Um, and it doesn't work that way anymore. And with the transparency that is now law, it won't work that way. So I, I'm, I would like to leave it as is. And, but I do have a question about that um, through you, Mr. Mayor. And it's, I know that when you, my understanding is we have to do this for Elections Canada. We pass the bylaw and then we notify um, the province or whoever it is we need to, to notify. Can we hold off notifying them or should we, or I, I'm not sure of the process. Question, I'm going to defer to our clerk, please. Uh, thank you, Mary McNeil. Um, essentially council passed the bylaw. So the bylaw does stand. Um, if 
I mean, I haven't reported it yet to the ministry as I'm waiting for the deadline. Um, I won't report anything until we know that the deadline for appeals has passed. Um, and the ministry needs to know before the end of the year. So I, I guess the answer to the question is, is that any changes that would need to be made can be can be done at any point during this year. Um, however, the bylaw itself has passed and the uh, the formal appeal period has ended. However, the ministry will need to know what the definite chain, what the definite um, direction of council is by December 31st. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. I think I think you brought up something that the bylaw has been passed, the decision has been made. We it is not appropriate to back up on that. However, the communication aspect, absolutely. And we have addressed that and it will be addressed. So with that, do, is there any further comments? Councillor Snowblum, please. Well, I was just going to comment that um, we're talking about communication and I, I think we would be remiss if we didn't um, recognize the efforts that um, the two individuals that submitted this letter and the people that they had sign it. I think that shows, um, I think that I take that as a positive, that they are interested in what happens in their communi communi um, community and their township, that they're interested in the direction that this council is taking the, their community. And I applaud them for being involved in acting on this. I think that's a, a positive. And I think if we look at that in a positive light and we look at a ways to improve our communication. I think it just echoes much of what everybody said and it highlights the fact that we are a progressive council. And I take your comments uh, very um, heartedly, uh, Councillor Snowden, on the standpoint that I believe these two individuals deserve a letter uh, and that would be the number one issue of the communication uh, strategy going forward. I will sign that to them on their efforts. And I would also like to suggest that we uh, direct our staff to receive and to file this petition uh, at the office. Uh, Councillor Miltenberg, please. Could you, we do not have a Facebook page and I am fairly confident that the um, letter, if we send it to these two individuals would or should be posted on their Facebook page because there are hundreds of people who responded to that. So I am had a point when I started. <laughs> Roger, quick, send it in. <laughs> so that's part of the communication strategy you're suggesting. Yes, and, and, and I would like to, I mean, reiterate, and I'm sure you will, but we don't have a strategy yet. So I thought I'd help you out with it, Mr. Mayor, that uh, we would recognize uh, the individuals who wrote the letter, as well as everyone who signed the petition tell them that further communication will be coming out and they're welcome to, I don't know, call whoever? Is that, okay. I'm happy to talk to anyone, but I mean, I don't speak for counsel and whatever. I'm not sure my point. Right. Roger, I, I, I think your, your point's well taken as far as the communication strategy. Uh, Councillor Vanstone, please. Yes, and uh, just to echo the, uh, what you call Facebook pages. There is a ACW Neighbors and uh, it's just for information and nothing else. So um, I go on it a lot uh, to hear what's going on. So I think that's one of the ones we should put it on. Everybody can get on it and uh, they can learn from it. Thank you for that. I see our clerk is writing that down. Councillor Forrester, please. Okay. Um, it, Glenn and I, in your conversation we had on the phone, does everybody on this list realize that they can vote for everybody that that's what needs to get out there as far as i'm concerned uh, in the letter that goes out however it does go out okay thanks no you're absolutely uh, right we we need to do a better job of education and conveying information point well taken and florence is uh, writing again that will be part of the communication strategy Okay, we have that and we have, uh, are, is all council good with directing staff to receive uh, this petition and file it in the office? We're good? Okay, any further comments? We're good on this? 
All right, staff, Mark, are you good with this? CEO? I just want to clarify, Florence, you're good with the direction that was there with regards to the letter. And uh, I don't know, was there a consensus about this ACW uh, Neighbors Facebook page? I, I just want to make sure we all understand before we move on to the next topic. So I understand that there will be a, a letter going to the two individuals that will be um, signed by Mayor McNeil. So I will work with Mayor McNeil on getting that letter um, drafted and we will make the necessary, uh, you know, we will post it um, at the ACW Neighbors Facebook page. Um, and I would just like to clarify that um, the reason why I'm not jumping in right now and saying, you know, let's create our own Facebook page today is I want to make sure we have a Facebook or we have a social media policy in in place prior to um, posting um, there. So just just as a kind of a, you know, uh, I want to get this done as fast as possible, but we do need to get some ducks in a row first, so. Yeah, and I, and I think we all appreciate there's processes with anything. Uh, Councillor Milton Bird, please. And I, I totally agree with Florence here. Um, and I'm wondering if in that letter, we should also say we are, it, we are staff is examining having our own Facebook, but because that's not everybody in ACW is in that group either. Oh, no. so it, no. In in the interim, could you post this for us while we look at our own social media policy, right? Because that shows that we're going to try to communicate it. We're not just going to stay through the ACW neighbors, and that isn't our website, and we don't have a social media policy. And and Florence is bang on as always. Point well taken, our clerk will consider that. Okay, we all good with that? All right, thank you very much for the discussion and I would like to suggest that we have a break um, and reconvene at 10.30, it is uh, 10.21 now. Okay, so we'll reconvene at 10.30, thank you.
Did you get your okay. cows milk, Jennifer, or uh, what happened? They got milked. It was a long night. I'm very thankful I have an electrician for a son. He's maybe not as thankful. He has a dairy farmer for a mother. <laughs> well, that's good. As long as you did. I'd hate to have to go out and start pumping tails. <laughs> so what, what exactly went wrong? Okay, I th I'd like to reconvene this meeting, if I could, please. And uh, we are on to 7.5.3, and that is the Cannabis Zoning Bylaw Appeal to the uh, LPAT, and that is for information of counsel. Uh, does anyone have any comments that they would like to make? We're good. Perfect. Thank you. On to 7.5.4, and that's the St. Helens uh, Hall Playground Project. Uh, everyone has read the letter involved in, uh, included in our package and uh, the, they have fundraised uh, $14,800. Uh, Jennifer, I, I look to you for clarification. So the intent, Jennifer, is for to purchase the playground material at a cost of $18,485 plus HST. Is that correct? More or less. Uh, that is an old quote, which is, I think, was only good for 30 days or whatever. So it will be in that range, whether it's gone up or not, it would, I'm sure, have to be requoted. Um, a little history on this. Um, first of all, we haven't been able to have a meeting for months. We had, I think, maybe one outside meeting. Um, and now not at all. So in December, I spent a fair amount of time on the on the phone, as did Barb, because as you know, internet is spotty over there. A lot of them don't even have it. So, you know, Zoom meetings are not an option. What we're looking for is actually direction on how to move forward. This has come to council several times. Um, it was supposed to happen last year and then it got shut down due to COVID. They came back in, in the fall or late summer and said, we'd like to get started on at least you know, getting the site ready. And then there were shutdowns again. So the reality of what's happening in St. Helens is they took out the old playground uh, two years ago now. And there are a lot of children in that area who use that playground, but it was kind of a, I don't know, death trap is a good word, but uh, you know, old and antiquated. So they want to take it down so no one got hurt and they've been fundraising for the second one. Council agreed last year to bridge fund since their fundraising was shut down and they're confident when they start up again, they'll be able to finish it. But now they're kind of, uh, we're seeking direction on how to move forward because despite multiple attempts by Hannah, who is a probably about 20 years old, a uh, granddaughter of the Snowdens who is, is leading the playground charge because she babysits, um, or she did. Um, despite multiple attempts, no other companies have, you know, replied. She gets standard, we'll get back to it after COVID or whatever. So they actually like the product that they, they got a quote on. They were just doing what is uh, ACW policy, which is trying to get multiple quotes, and they have been unable to. So they'd like to proceed, but they're unclear if they can or even how to do it. Does, you know, does Mark or, I mean, the municipality say, no, we have to quote and we'll try to get quotes for you or can, can they move? Because we've already agreed to bridge fund them. And the, you know, it, it's a playground, but as you know, it's a very, very small playground. Um, there is a playground committee, Brian Vanosh would be involved with everything but they're just not sure how to move since they can't get any more quotes or they've been unsuccessful. So I, I guess they're looking for direction. They'd really like to have something up. If, if a playground committee could come out in the spring, it's a very small thing. It could go in very quickly, but then the, the children of the area would have something over the summer. Even if St. Helens can't have events, then there would be something for the small children in the area. So that's what this is. A, 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 for clarification, how can they move? Okay, so just before, thank you for that, Jennifer. Just before I go to our uh, CAO, okay, uh, Councillor Vanstone, please. Well, I was just gonna say, and I think Mark will probably echo the same thing, is that uh, 
we have in the past, if you can't get any of their quotes, we'll have to accept the one quote. Um, at least I think so. <clears throat> yeah, thank, thank you for that, uh, uh, Councillor Vanstone. And actually, uh, just for a little information, I followed up with Hannah Wheeler on, on the weekend regarding this, just for clarification to know exactly what was desired. I was uh, very impressed with this uh, individual. She has a lot of organizational skills, a great personality on the phone. And her desire that she expressed to me was the, if they could proceed to obtain the material, uh, the playground in the quote of 18,485, they have undertaken to ask individuals for the donation of the excavation, for example, and I'm sure our municipality through Brian would assist them as far as whether there's any material, be it pea stone or, or um, wood chips or that sort of thing that would be required that we could supply. They are not interested in the quote at the 24348. They feel that they can get some community buy-in and I think all of us understand in a project, if the community can work together, they feel a sense of, of ownership to it if they contributed to it. And as Councillor Vanstone said, we had another situation at St. Helens with replacing or not replacing uh, of uh, dealing with the cenotaph there. And we were only able to get one quote and we went ahead with it. So in a perfect world, sure, you'd like three quotes. This is not a perfect world, this is COVID. And this is a quote that they're very comfortable with. And again, it would be great if the company would uh, honor that quote and we'll see what takes place. CAO, are you good to uh, have authorization from this council to move ahead with this quote if we had a mover and a seconder to that extent? Yeah, with respect to the quotations, I think it does ask for three quotations. They did reach out to, I think, four different companies. So um, that's all you can do is reach out to four. And she did that and we got one and that's what it is. That's what it is. So at least uh, the approach was done. Um, I, I, I want to just follow up with what you said, Glenn, about uh, the public works putting down the P-Stone or whatever you had said or the, the wood chips there is specific product that you just can't throw anything in the bottom of there because just like they did in Port Albert, it has to be specific material in case someone fell off the slide or fell off their swing, uh, a wood chip in the knee wouldn't uh, go very well. So there are specific products that are in there. And I know uh, down in Port Albert, they went through that same thing. Absolutely, I concur with that 100%. Uh, and they have fundraised 14,800. So just a matter of the bridging to the 18, uh, 14. Councillor Milton Burke, please. Uh, just a couple things. Um, there is in our budget uh, 5,000 for every community if they want to work on their playground. So they're, they, they are planning on accessing that. Um, it's all, it was in last year's budget and it didn't get done. Um, just as a heads up, uh, the one that Port Albert accessed, they would also like to do that. And um, this is a quote which they may or may not, you know, we're looking to move forward. The, the number yeah. I can tell you will be different. And then, in fact, the company might not want to quote it at this point. But this was the quote that they received. And, and if we have direction to move forward, then it will come to council when it's, you know, quotes are only, no, no, Roger. No, it doesn't come to council. We'll just do it. <laughs> okay. But uh, it will need to be requoted and whether this company is shut down now for COVID, we don't know. But as soon as we can, then we would, if we have this direction from council, that we will just move forward with what we can get, knowing that you've seen what we want and we're going to get as close to it as possible. Thank you for that. CAO, what kind of form would you like the motion to have? I just want to, uh, with respect to uh, the quotation only being for 30 days, I'm 100% for certain if you reach out to tell them that they were successful in getting the quotation, that they will they will abide by the quotation received. They just do that in case it went on for years and years and years and came back. But I think there's a 30 day thing, but it hasn't been that long. So I think if they were a good company, they would uh, they would acknowledge that that quotation of 18485. Having said that, I think we should adopt a resolution if council wants to accept the quotation. 
And with regards to the Port Albert area, that, that uh, playground equipment that was placed there, it was fundraised by the group of uh, individuals in Port Albert and they did very well on that project. And the municipality could contribute $4,000 towards that project. So I'm just saying that because we're about $4,000 difference between what their quotation is and, uh, and what, uh, what they've fundraised to date. Okay, thank you for that. So I would entertain a resolution to move forward with the quote in the amount of 18485 for the St. Helens Playground. Do I have a mover for that? And that is Deputy Mayor Watt and is seconded by Councillor Fisher. Any further discussion? All, all, Jennifer, please. Just And then the, our CEO. Uh, yeah, so with this resolution, which I'm totally supportive of, um, if they do re-quote and, or if they do, if the company says we aren't going to honor that quote, it's now higher. Do we have to come back to council then, or can they just proceed with it? CAO, please. If that can, if that is the particular, and I have my doubts whether it happened, but I'd be interested to. Uh, I would speak to them myself because I think if they aren't willing to accept that quotation, um, I would say uh, our our friend Hannah is it. If Hannah has troubles yes. convincing that, she just needs to get in touch with me and I will make the call to them. I Perfect. think. Perfect. Okay. And, and will you communicate want, that? Yep. And I just Please want to further clarify, does council want to accept the quotation um, and in acknowledging that the municipality is going to contribute $4,000 or not? I just want clarification there because what the resolution will read that we accept the quotation. We have the funds of 14,797, but I, I think it'd be prudent for council to contribute their $4,000 just as they did with Port Albert. I, I think that would be the, uh, the, my sentiment. Councillor Vanstone, please. Yes, as I said before, uh, we treat everybody in the township the same. So if that's a playground. Uh, we've already done the same for Ben Miller, uh, Port Albert, and all the other places. So I'm 100% in favor of it. <clears throat> so, Councillor Miltonberg, please. I am unclear, Mark, whether the $14,000 that they are quoting includes the $5,000 that is, was put in the budget for each playground. Do you know what I mean? They may have $9,000. I haven't checked the math in months um, from their general ledger account. And they know that another 5,000 is available because it's been sitting in the budget. We put in 15,005 for each one as a budgetary item. So I am unclear if they are counting that or not. Okay, so, so Right now, they have fundraised 14,797.17, and I have confirmed that that's in our reserves. That's their fundraising. Spectacular. Awesome. That, that does not include the $4,000. I don't know where you're getting the 5000 from. I'm not familiar with that number. I'm familiar with 4000 so I, I don't know exactly. I, I know there was a playground policy that came forward. Uh, I don't know if it was a policy or what it was, but I'd have to get staff to look at it to see what the policy says. But we did contribute 4000 to ben, uh, to Port Albert. And to continue, Mr. Mayor, the, the quote that you see does not include the work for the foundation, I believe. So the total cost is going to be more than that. So I'm hesitant to, they're happy to bridge fund at this point. So I would suggest that we just make the motion and look at the end of it because the quote does not include the foundation work, which they have a lot of volunteers for. Do you know what I mean? That's for the equipment only, not for the base. That is correct. And that's where I was going before when I maybe misspoke, that they're just looking for support from this council for 18485 And they are either reaching out to individuals or our municipality to assist in other areas with this. Okay. Uh, Councillor Snowblin and then Deputy Mayor, please. Well, Mr. Mayor, when we first had the discussion about this playground, um, $5,000 access by communities within our township at a budget meeting, it was for situations precisely like this, where they have fundraised to the point where, you know, they're exhausted. Let's give them a boost up. Would it make sense for the resolution 
to say that we accept the quote of 18,485 um, with up to $5,000 accessed through the municipality in the playground fund. And that way it addresses any situation where the quote might be a little bit higher now. Um, it, it, um, it doesn't bind us to just $4,000. They have up to 5,000 that they can access according to our policy on that. And it, um, it gives a little bit of leeway, not only for the community in terms of what the quote is, but it also um, doesn't, it doesn't stop the actions. It, you know, things can just keep moving forward without having somebody has to make a phone call, somebody has to come back to us about a different dollar amount. Quite well taken, Councillor Snowden. Uh, Deputy Mayor, please. Thank you. I was just going to agree with the other comments that uh, my recollection was also that we had allocated 5,000 for each of these things. It doesn't mean we have to spend it all, but it's there. No. CAO? What? The number? There seems to be a discrepancy between four and 5,000. I'd just like some clarity. Again, I don't have that uh, ahead of me right now. Um, I'm going to, the resolution I'm going to accept uh, that we accept that quotation. However, in my action, I'm going to put in here that uh, that we authorize the purchase of the equipment using the fundraising reserves and the municipality will contribute uh, an amount and will be determined at the 2021 budget. And, uh, and, and I think that gives them an opportunity to uh, possibly continue to fundraise if, if they can in these times. And then we can revisit it at the budget meeting and put whatever dollar amount we need to, but we're giving them the go ahead to go ahead and get this equipment ordered. And I think that's the bottom line to proceed with this to hopefully get it in place this year. Uh, that's a desire of council. Okay, so that would be the resolution that our CAO just, uh, oh, CAO please. I can read the resolution, I have it done. Please. That Ashfield Cobra Wawanosh Township Council hereby agrees to accept the quotation received from Henderson Recreation Limited in the amount of $18,485 plus applicable taxes just to supply and install a play set model B306676 R0 play steel fit. That was a little more detailed than what I was going to say. Uh, it's good. So do we have a mover and a seconder to that effect? Councillor Milton Berg, seconded by Councillor Forrester. Any further discussion? Uh, Councillor Milton Berg, please. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming this is going to go forward. And if it does, could Mark communicate with Barb Snowden the direction and the fact that he would help with the quote if necessary? Or would I think it would be better coming from him rather than me trying to explain it, if that's okay? Yeah, there, there's no quote. Uh, we already have the quote, so I don't know. Oh, I meant if she had trouble with the quote, if they said yes, no. yes, yes, yes. So yep. you would be okay. Um, does Hannah have email? If she, oh, I do, because I got an email from her. Okay. Never mind. I'll I'll communicate to Hannah. Thank you. Okay. So Hannah is away at school now, or she was. She was sent home. She's in school. So I will communicate with the chair, and you could communicate with Hannah. Yep, because Hannah that? will still have email access. So yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. Any further questions, comments? We have a motion on the floor and I would entertain a vote. All in favor of the motion. And that is carried. Thank you for that. Uh, public works, nothing on. Uh, environmental issue, committee reports. Do any members of council have any committee reports that they would like to share at this time? Councillor Miltonberg, please. Well, we've just spoken about the uh, St. Helens one, and I also had a, a meeting with the Dungannon Community Alliance moving forward with their fundraising. Um, I kind of thought something was going to be on the agenda, I think. But anyway, um, I'll speak to the minutes when they arrive, but they are just continuing in their efforts for the green space. Okay, oh, thank wait, you. One more thing, sorry. And there will be, they will make the deadline of January 31st, the Dungannon Community Alliance. They have reached out to every service group. They have letters for budgetary requests. Several of them have no budgetary requests, but that is in the cover letter. And so I believe we've accomplished what we wanted to with the Dungannon 
Community Alliance. We have a unity, a community moving forward together, and we have all the budget requests coming in by January 31st. Well done, well done. Great coordination, Jennifer, and that was the intent. Mission accomplished. Any further com uh, committee reports of anyone? Seeing none, okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, on, nothing on uh, new business. Uh, does anyone have anything for a future meeting? Correspondence, uh, there's nothing that I am aware of. Uh, correspondence for information purposes, 10.1, United Way Coldest Night of the Year Sponsorship. I would like some input from council on this. Thoughts, please. Uh, Councillor Snowblin first, please, and then Councillor Forster. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I fully support um, initiatives, fundraisers to um, help with the homeless issue uh, within our within our county, within our communities. I think it is. Um, it's it's a problem that just doesn't have a straightforward answer to it. And I applaud the efforts of everyone that tries to make a difference. But having said that, um, I'm not, and I wouldn't vote against it if, if the majority of council was for it, but I think people should be aware that this is the United Way of here in Perth. And as much as, Perth County probably doesn't have a better handle on homelessness than Heron County. Um, I would like to see our efforts be more concentrated into Heron County. Um, how five hundred dollars isn't a lot of money. I'm just as far as sponsorship. I'm not certain that we're going to get the bang for our buck in, in this, but I don't see that as I don't see this issue as having bank for a buck. But in researching this a little further, it not only helps with, you know, sort of, you know, putting food and a, a warm bed and a warm place to stay for um, a homeless person, but it also fundraises for, um, a, I think they call it a housing advocate. And I assume that that housing advocate would be employed by here in Perth United Way. And I'm not certain that, um, I don't know how far reaching that is in ACW or into the county of Huron. I do see a lot of good people doing good work here and I wouldn't want to negate any of that. I'm just concerned about our money going towards hiring somebody that would be employed by Huron and Perth counties. So that's that's my comment. Point well taken, Anita. You bring up a variety of, of, of excellent topics. I, I think, was it Councillor Forrester? Did you have a comment you'd like to make? And then Councillor Vanstone, please. Um, this, this rings a bell. Did we sponsor this last year or was, or were we as counselors supposed to sponsor Bernice or something like that? I, I'm just curious. And I'll ask for a response from our CAO and then Councillor Vanstone, please. This came to council after the fact because they were late in getting it out the door and it came after the fact, but the event was already done. So council agreed not to do anything with it at that time. This time, they got it out a little bit sooner, but and that's why we're talking about it today. Uh, thank you for that clarification. Councillor Vanstone, please. Um, yes, I'd like to see us give some money to it if it's $500. Uh, but there, the, and most of the homeless are in Godridge. We do have a few, but um, most of them are in Godridge. And I know Godridge is got a um, thing in place right now for giving money and helping the homeless. So I was wondering if we could reach out to them and that $500, if it goes completely there without having to pay wages and whatnot, is a lot better bang for our buck. So I was wondering if we could reach out to Godridge and see if we could give them some money to help 
rather than uh, give it to the United Way. Thank you. Well, that's an excellent comment, Councillor Van Stone, and that kind of dovetails into what Councillor Snowbin was saying. And and got, uh, Huron County has an out of the cold program that has approximately 12 or 13 individuals that access that. And we also have a warming center for those individuals during the day. There are individuals that are raising sponsorship money for out of the cold evening. It used to be a walk. This year it will be a different format because of COVID. So you're bringing up different options and, and I kind of get the sentiment that this council would like the money directed to the homeless in, in Huron County. I kind of get that sentiment. However, I'm going to go to Councillor Miltenberg, please. Sorry. And then Councillor Fisher. Uh, yeah, I don't agree with that. Um, for a couple of reasons. And while I, 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 I initially I was agreeing with Anita and I certainly appreciate all the points, I've, I've looked at it bigger than that. Um, to me, this is a, a, a comment akin to the ward system. It's, it's, it's here in Perth is our area. You know, when here in, in Perth health units went together, like that, that annoyed me for no reason, but it's like, oh great, now we're sharing with Perth. But the reality is that is our region. So if the funding mechanism is through here in Perth, that, that's our region. It's no longer just here in. We have to think bigger because we are bigger. And where the comment is there's probably more in, in, in Goddard than there is in Perth. Well, if I were from Perth, I'd be saying, why am I giving money all the homeless are in Huron County, not in Perth? So why am I supporting this Huron Perth initiative? So we, we can flip it on the other way. And about the, the paying the wages, I, I understand that as well. But to me, it was kind of like when the AMGH was looking for fundraising and you could either put it towards a, a scanner or you could put it towards mental health if you, or you could put it to wherever they needed it. And to me, I put it to wherever they needed it because even though I wanted it to go one way, I wanted the organization to be able to do with it the way that they thought would do the best amount of money. And homelessness is a burgeoning problem in Huron for sure. I can't speak to Perth, but it certainly is in Huron, but Huron Perth is the organization that it, it goes through. So there are needs, they are needs that are rapidly expanding. The funding mechanism which they had before, which was walks and fundraising is no longer, um, you know, an option for them. So they were looking at different ways to fundraise and this is one of them. And whether it's for us specifically or, or just the greater good and we're part of that area of greater good, I'm actually okay with that. Because that, to me, at the end of the day, is, is the greater good. So if there is a need, there is a need. And until there is a better way to get it there and they request that money from us, it, it's a, maybe an imperfect solution, but it is a help. So I would like to support this initiative um, and not yearly, because I know it's a yearly event, but I would like to support it this year and I would suggest $1,000. And that's my comment. Okay, your point is well taken. Homeless is not a Heron County issue. Every county, every area experiences it. And I will suggest every province in our great country. Councillor Snowblin. Uh, I would just like Jennifer to Councillor Miltenberg to know that I, I don't disagree with you. Um, and when you correlate it to our discussion earlier about the board system. I agree with you, I see your point. However, I think when you look at this fundraiser, it not only buys meals, it not only puts warm beds um, for folks to sleep on, but it also goes towards an employee or a potential employee. I think that that has to be disseminated. I think that you either are raising funds for beds and foods or you're raising funds or finding a way to staff somebody. 
I'm not certain that I totally agree with a fundraiser that goes towards staffing. I guess that's my, my point. So um, yes, we're under the, um, our health unit, our United Way, some other uh, agencies are under the auspices of Karen and Perth together. And I, I understand the economies of scale that are related to that. I think though that this, um, the genesis of this request is from one of our ACW residents. And she works tirelessly for the homeless. Um, and I want to recognize her efforts. I, I, I think Bill said something about maybe, you know, sponsoring something that Goderich has in place for um, the homeless. I am totally in agreement for supporting the homeless and, and helping them as much as we can. And if that means that we give a different amount to the United Way of Huron Perth and let them decide how best they need to spend that, that donation from ACW, that's up to them. They know what they need. So that, that's, my, that's my reasons for questioning whether or not we're going to support this event. It's not about not supporting homelessness. It's not about not supporting United Way. And it's not about not being a part of a, a Huron Perth agency. Great thoughtful comments. Uh, Councillor Miltonberg and then Councillor Fisher, please. Thank you, Anita, for clarifying. And I, and I agree with you on every point except one. Um, <laughs> And that would be about the staff and whether we should be funding a staff. And I understand that completely. Um, every December, I actually subscribe to something where I get the ratings of every charity and I look at what they send on it, spend on administration. Doesn't change how much I give, but it changes on who I give. So I'm not a fan of bloated administrations. However, when I look at this, to me, it, and I might be wrong, but I'm, I'm making the assumption that it's like us, ACW, looking at a community development officer. We have been trying to do it ourselves for quite some time. And now the need has gotten so large, I feel, anyway, I know not everyone does, that we need someone whose actual job is to deal with, do this. Not a piecemeal of we're trying to do this and we're trying to do this. We need somebody to oversee it, to do a better job, to how to at least come up with a plan and whether it's a short-term position to set up a program, whatever it is. And to me, there, the explosion of homelessness that you see in, in Godrich, which affects me as an ACW resident, tells me that um, a, a better program and process needs to be in place. And that might need somebody who knows what they're doing to at least set it up, maybe not on an ongoing basis, but maybe it's a contract position for a year to say, okay, you know what, this is all new and we need to figure out a better way to do it than just giving them meals. Like, let's look, let's look at the root of the problem, how, how, you know, that kind of thing. And that's why I wouldn't be adverse to funding a position through United Way because I follow them fairly closely, have for years, and I think they do great work. And they are, they have, they're very well ranked in the charities actually. So I don't have a problem with that, but I appreciate that view. Just before I go to, thank you for that, uh, Councillor Miltenberg. And just before I go to Councillor Fisher, just for some clarification, I'm, I'm actually a member of the Huron County Homelessness Task Force. And on behalf of Huron County, uh, we have also seen the need and have contributed, uh, Roger, you correct me, I think about $450,000 towards the homelessness in Huron County. And there is professional staff that have been hired to work with these individuals. So that has been done. And we are trying to provide professional help to assist them. And I just wanted to clarify that. Councillor Fisher, please. So, Glenn, just to, to clarify that, so that means that is county, a county that, um, organization working on uh, our county homeless. Yes, yes that is correct. And, and like, 
You know, yeah. Huron County also contributes $30,000 to the United Way uh, this past uh, year. And, that, and I'm not saying that to say we shouldn't. It's just information that council understands that Huron County is taking the homelessness issue not only serious, however, we're contributing financially to hire professional people to deal with this situation. Like Gloria, every, you had a comment? Every, every, uh, every Christmas, I work for the Salvation Army cattle campaign and I yeah. work a couple days a week for them because I like that the money stays in Huron County and I like that they don't have a bloated, inflated management structure. I think United Way does and that concerns me is you know putting dollars someplace where a lot of it goes to the top when perhaps we could direct it closer to home the here in county uh, I think would be more appropriate the Salvation Army our food banks so I, I kind of I'm agreeing with Anita uh, just where to funnel the money I think we all agree that we're we want to support any homeless uh, endeavor, but which one's the best? Yeah, yeah, we're all in the same sentiment. I'm sure that Councillor Vanstone is going to shed some light on that uh, question. Uh, no light. I just uh, would like to see our money go to, like, why have two organizations doing the same job when here in county and Godrich is, is uh, trying to spearhead the problem right around here. So I think that's where money should go and I'm not against, I'm, and I'm against giving it to the United Way. So uh, that's it in a nutshell. <clears throat> I'm, I'm Bill, I'm sorry, you just, or at least I didn't hear it. You are or are not in support of this? I'm not in support of the United Way. <clears throat> okay, thank you, just for that clarification. So what is the direction of council on this? Uh, Councillor Snowblum, please. Well, I think whatever council was um, interested in perhaps donating to this cause, we should consider at our next, uh, at budget time, whether or not we decide to support, and, and I think Bill mentioned uh, an organization in Goderich. If there's another organization, we can look at that too, but uh, feel as though we are helping in a more direct way um, to helping those that are desperately in need rather than um, organizations that um, money is going to the top rather than to the people that actually need it. And whether that's the Salvation Army or whether that's, I think Lakeshore Church uh, has something to, I'm not certain, but we could, uh, look at an agency at that time and suggest maybe 500 to a thousand dollar donation at budget time. So you're kind of thinking to de defer this to budget, Anita, your sentiment. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Miltenberg, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, two things. I just looked up um, here in Perth charity rating and 84% of the funds goes to um, programs. And that in that industry is actually a very good rating um, because you have to go, for example, a lot of the health ones are in the 50s. Um, usually if it's like overseas, they're in the 90s. So in that industry here in Perth chapter, United Way is doing very well. I can't, you know, they rate them by area. So let's just, I would like, I'm uncomfortable with saying that about them because it's not actually accurate. I'm not speaking for all of United Way because I don't know, but I do know our Perth Huron chapter does very well. Um, secondly, in normal times, I would say yes, defer to budget, but this is not normal times. And when we did our budget in the spring, there were two things in that budget. We approved requests based on whether the event was run. And we also said that if someone did a different event because of COVID that they could request something mid-year, which is not what we normally do. We like to have everything in. Now, I'm pretty sure that all of our money was not spent this year because all the events were canceled. The other thing we did was start a fund. We just put it in reserves for COVID response in case we needed it. And to my knowledge, we have not accessed that. 
So this is a, to me an unusual year. I would like to support any fundraiser, maybe not any, as many as possible that come to us who are who have their traditional ways of raising funds. You look at St. Helens, they can't raise anything. Ben Miller can't, Kingsbridge can't. Uh, if you are fiscally responsible or have a municipality who owns your business, that's fine. But there are lots and lots of not-for-profits who cannot fundraise in traditional ways, like a walk that is really strongly supported by people because they can do something. And in this year, we said people could come to us mid-year if they needed to. This is a, a, a different way of fundraising and it's a different year. And I, I feel like I'm like waving a flag for it, but I mean, we haven't had any other requests like this where people are asking for help in an alternative way. And I'd like to support them in some way. I, I do not want it deferred to budget. That's what I would like to say. We, we are not short of the cash. It's a, it might be flawed in some ways, the methodology, but it still gets money in the right places. And it is a not-for-profit that is struggling to fundraise in, in, in tough times. And I'm willing to support them. Thank you for that. And, and in reading this, the United Way are proposing, well, they're not proposing, they're hosting a COVID safe event in Goddardton area during February, one month away. And we're all aware of, of all of the commitment of the uh, said person in this to homelessness and all that, that they do. So I guess I'm going to uh, um, ask if uh, a member of council would make a motion to support this. And, and uh, I'm looking for a dollar amount. I, I guess uh, I'm gonna put it out there. I'm thinking out loud to support this in the amount of $500. However, that motion will come from a member of council if they so wish with the dollar amount that they would like. Would any member of council like to make a motion? And Councillor Snowblin, I see your hand, please. Um, Jennifer has made some good points and uh, I'm not in principle or in theory against this. So I will make a motion that we support this for um, $500. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Miltonberg seconds. Any further discussion? Uh, Councillor Miltonberg, please. I'd be happy with a higher amount, but I am agreeing with 500. No mixed message there. You're in agreement with the motion. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Any further discussion? We have a motion for $500. has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion. And that carries. Thank you very much. You're good at that, staff? Mr. Yeah, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, yeah, if I please. Could, um, at budget time, could I ask um, uh, as administration prepares that, that they might be able to give us uh, just a small synopsis of what we do as a township to support homelessness? in terms of uh, dollar amount donations? Absolutely, I think that's a very reasonable request. You're good with that, CAO? I'm not quite sure of what the question is, but I guess because um, I'll, I, will, I, I don't know what the response is because I, I don't know what we do for homeless, so I'm not, uh, so this is the first time we've ever donated any such thing unless someone else yeah. knows anything different, so. Yeah, so, I'm so this sorry, would be one. No, 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 that's good, Mark. So this would be one item, Anita, that we would support the homeless situation with. Well, as I recall, at budget, we get a list sort of of what charities we want to go ahead and support. So this will be on that list and it'll show that we already authorized the $500. Yes. So you, further to that, on that list, could you maybe give us an indication if any of those um, agencies that we've donated to uh, deal with or help with the uh, homeless issue or homelessness or, or organizations that help with homelessness. I can only provide you what they provide me. So um, we'll, yes. what, whoever asks for requests for funds, we will include it and we'll be part of the agenda pack or uh, the budget binder, sorry. 
And I guess uh, in reading through the request, I guess we'll know whether they support the homeless financially or what. I, I don't know why, but I guess, yeah, no, I guess we'll see whatever we get. I, yes. I, yeah. That's yeah, fair. I, th I think that satisfies Anita's uh, uh, query is, is the fact that if there's something that we donate to that it is homeless related that we're aware of that. Correct, uh, Councillor Snowden? Yeah, you got it. Okay. Councillor Fisher, and then I want to make a comment uh, on Councillor Miltonberg's comments. I just wondered when when we'll be doing budget. Oh, no, before we get to that, uh, I would like to just uh, say, Jennifer, thank you very much for bringing that uh, number of the 84% that gets through. That is a number that is of great interest and thank you for the research, number one. And the second is sharing it with council so that we can make informed decisions. Thank you for that. So, uh, uh, Mark, uh, do you want to make any comment? That'll be um, at a future meeting. We will make the determination as to uh, when we'll be doing our budget. Uh, CAO, please. Yeah. Um, before we get off the topic, you need to move and second it. And then, or you already did, we need to call all in favor before we move on to another. Oh, you're absolutely right. And I would get sidetracked. Any further discussion on this? I So we have voted on this, Mark, to support oh. this, correct? Oh. Yeah, no, I did. We're looking we did. for all in favor, or I didn't see that, did we? Okay, sorry. Yes, we did. Yeah, no problem. No so problem. Back to the, you back to the other comments. The, the budget usually comes forward to probably the first or second week in March. That's what we usually look at it. Last year was different because COVID hit and we had to do it in April, but uh, normally it's the first or second week in March. Is that okay, uh, Councillor Fisher? That answers your query? Perfect, great, thank you. Okay, uh, no other correspondence uh, on our table this morning on finished business, the Roma conference. Everyone can see who is registered for that. Uh, Councillor Forrester, please. Just curious, I've never done an online thing. Is there a password to get into that or how do you get into that or Mark will be sending us something? Uh, Councillor Miltenberg would like to contribute. Uh, based on the last one, Wayne, they send you something the week before and they actually have, uh, at least the last one, they had a, a practice one. You could go in on the Sunday afternoon and do it. And uh, I would suggest if you, if they send it out and Gloria's nodding, <laughs> practice the day before because it's, it's, you waste a lot of time otherwise trying to figure it out. But they do send you something the week before usually. So. Thank you for that, Councillor Miltenberg. Yeah, there will be a link sent out in advance uh, for that. Okay. Okay, nothing is scheduled for in camera, so we will move into our bylaws now. And that is the zoning bylaw. And it would be okay to go around with that. And so I will suggest that it is moved by Councillor Van Stone, seconded by Councillor Snowblin. The leave be given to introduce bylaw number 3 2021, being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw number 32 2008 of the Township of Ashfield, Colburn, Walmanosh, as amended, and then it now be read severally a first, a second, and third time, and finally pass this 19th day of January 2021. All in favor of that motion. That is carried. And the confirmation bylaw, it is moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Watt, seconded by Councillor Miltonberg, that leave be given to introduce bylaw number 6 2021, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Township of Ashfield Colburn Wallenosh meeting held on the 19th day of January 2021, and will now be read severally a first, second, and third time, and finally pass this 19th day of January 2021. All in favor of the motion. That's carried. And to the adjournment, moved by Councillor Forrester, seconded by Councillor Fisher, that Ashfield, Coburn, Wallenosh Township does now adjourn to meet again on the February 2nd, 2021 at 9 a.m. or at the call of the mayor. All in favor of the motion. And that is carried. Thank you very much, everyone, for a, uh, a great meeting, great input of everyone, and that's just uh, what we want. Please continue Bye, to stay all. safe. Have fun. Stay safe. Be good. Thanks, all.